psychologists, we spend a lot of time collecting data to generate new results that can inform agricultural practices. And sometimes we spend less time thinking about how humans are actually interacting with those results. Rigorous science is accomplished by people, but today I also want to think about the people who might be the end users of the results. Science obviously generates objective results that are very useful for driving our knowledge forward. And so here's just an example of the kind of information we might collect um, that is very meaningful, but also is very complex for a lay person to digest. The new results that we generate from agricultural research um, has knowledge associated with it that has direct application. For example, we might develop new models that can be applied in agricultural systems and novel crops that could have higher production than the current conventional crops that we are using. We can also build new designs for things like off-grid systems that harvest fuel from biological processes that we've come to understand through our study of ecology. We've developed fertilizer products that are made from wastes that can reduce the carbon dioxide emissions from agricultural soils. And we can also use our results to reimagine agricultural landscapes that promote environmental benefits. And this can be done at the regional scale, as well as thinking globally about where our agricultural systems are. Despite what all the results point to for best, best management practices, the human dimension of agricultural systems is influenced by much more than just science. How much change are people really willing to tolerate to achieve environmental benefits? For example, from, by switching from annual row crop agriculture to perennial crops. Human expectations vary geographically. If we think of a comparison mm -hmm. between a crop, a novel crop like agave that might be grown in the desert southwest with much higher water use efficiency than a crop like cotton, in, in addition to higher yields, but this is not a crop that is necessarily well understood by growers in the United States. So who is ready to trade the convenience that we've become so used to for sustainability? For example, by integrating off-grid energy production systems with agricultural production. The application of science is actually dependent on the value systems of people who are making the decisions about how they manage their soil and agricultural landscapes. How much are people willing to toil to achieve off-grid systems? What intensity of management is acceptable? In some cases, we can grow agricultural products with very low intensity management in the understory of a forest. In other cases, we might require um, intense labor or mechanization. Are ecological benefits even a human priority? Understanding the human dimension is essential for using the results about best management practices. The human dimension demands communication that goes far beyond just data reporting and beyond just standing up and giving lectures. Meaningful communication takes a lot of time, time to actually sit and listen to a community, to what their concerns are and to what they're interested in before teaching them about the new results that we've obtained. It requires time for direct engagement. Here, for example, is a group of stakeholders sitting around a table that includes representatives from industry, public finance, and law, in addition to the educators and researchers.
It also requires time to place ecological benefits in context with everyday life. For example, here's a workshop that we hosted where we brought people into a restaurant where they're eating the food that was produced with new, new methods. And it takes a lot of planning to make communication inclusive. And so my group has been developing methods for how to host conversations in a way that's inclusive and get the whole community involved. In summary, science definitely <clears throat> informs best management practices in agriculture, but we have a lot of work to, to do to integrate this science with our cultural value system. And we have to find ways to make time for meaningful communication and engage with the human dimension.